Hey everybody, it's Eric here with Spartan Auto Works. Today we're going to make a quick video about 04, 05, 06 GTO gauge clusters. One of my buddies in Florida has been begging me for a couple years to turn this on for him. And when he comes back around the holidays, of course, I'm not available to turn it on for him. And uh, I've never had a way to do it off the car, and I don't want to take my car apart. Anytime I take my GTO apart, something falls apart. So I'm leaving that thing together. So finally, I was at a salvage yard uh, that I'm good friends with. And uh, they had a couple of these cars laying around, so I got the appropriate cluster that I needed and pulled the pigtail uh, out of the car. So the software we're using is called VZ Cluster Mod. It was a kind of a group project. You can do your own research on it, but there's kind of a group project. Some people that are, uh, I guess, very computer smart on the GTO forums uh, were able to map the gauge cluster to figure out all the different presets, and they made it into some open source software anybody can download and uh, actually made it really really easy for people that aren't good at uh, basically command prompt type stuff to uh, preload different things into the cluster so with that being said uh, you can do this in the car or off the car uh, it's pretty simplistic um, the software like I said is free you will need an appropriate uh, onboard diagnostic cable you can make your own or you can buy them pre-made. I bought this cable a long, long time ago. I've done quite a few of these clusters locally here in St. Louis. Um, never had the cable bench harness to do it until now. But I, I don't know where I bought the cable because it's been so long. But you can probably find some information online for that. If I can find the appropriate cable, I may post it in the description. Or you can build a cable and there's plenty of information on that about there, or out there about that on the uh, GTO forums. If you're going to build a bench harness to do this off the car, uh, I've already got the wiring figured out for you. Uh, there are also, I believe, somebody referred to in one of the forums that you could use like a ribbon cable out of a computer. That may be possible. I've never tried it. Also, the, the connector on the back is kind of similar to that of like a Cadillac, I think, CTSV, um, like an older CTSV or STS Cadillac um, gauge cluster. So that might work as well. I don't know if the the lock would be the same one or not if it fit, but I know it's something similar to another cluster I've worked on. So if you can't find the GTO pigtail, you got you know maybe a couple other options there. So if you uh, get an appropriate GTO pigtail, uh, you can match up the colors. So pin one is going to be 12 volt voltage all the time. That's going to be orange and yellow. Uh, pin two is going to be for the backlight or backlighting. You're going to put that to constant 12 volt voltage. Uh, the ALDL connector, uh, we'll skip down to that here for this, is going to be pin number 9, which is this bottom one right here, if you can see that in the video. So that bottom one, if you're looking at it like that. And then you're going to have pin 20 is going to go to switch volt or switch um, ignition voltage, which is like key voltage basically. Pin 31, also uh, switch voltage. And uh, pin number 6, I don't know why I have that listed as... Uh, uh, switch voltage because that's not pin number six should be your um, communication wire which is going to go to pin nine and there's something wrong with this i'll double check this but um pin number six should be uh your communication wire then pin number or pin 17 is going to be black and yellow and that's your ground so basically if you come to the connector these two are ground right here this is your power to your device and then i move this pin here there's some locks that go in here uh, this is just out of a car. This is not how I'm using it on the bench, but um, when I was fabbed up the harness the first time before I made it permanent, I was using this connector. I moved one of this wire here to pin number nine, which if you're looking at the connector, is going to be this guy right here. So if you're going to hot wire directly to your your um, uh, cable, you want to make sure that you have it going to this this particular pin on your cable. So that being said, that covers the the wiring diagram for the off car cable. Um, pretty self-explanatory. There is quite a bit of information about the actual pinout too on a lot of the forums. But if you're going to make your own cable, pin number nine for your communication, and then you can you really don't have to put power to this, but you can make sure you have constant power to pin one and two, and then pin twenty and thirty-one are going to be switch switch uh, switch voltage, and then pin seventeen is ground. So that being covered, uh, let's dive into the software next. All right, everybody, we have uh, opened up our VZ Cluster Mod program. It's, like I said, completely free. Uh, we've connected our cable. We have a pre-defined uh, cable uh, that we bought a long, long time ago. 
Um, so the first thing we do to do is open the cable up in the program. So in order to do that, we're going to type list ports. I think it's all one word. All right, COM6, open, COM6, COM6 successfully open. So right now it says in car, cluster, COM6. We're gonna go bench, because we are doing ours on the bench. So bench cluster, COM6. So first thing you wanna do is you can test the cable. You can go to listen, type in listen, and you'll see if it's in the car, you'll see chatter from the BCM, since there's no BCM here, obviously we see no chatter. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to read nine. Whoops, read nine. It's kind of difficult to do one-handed. All right, so I've already messed with this one. We are on the HSV shutdown screen, or HSV startup screen. Uh, there's Holden, HSV, couple Chevrolet, uh, the Pontiac screen, and um, one other custom one that doesn't work. Um, but anyway, once you load it up, it's going to tell you what it's predefined to. So in order to get the custom shutdown screen, you will have to use the HSV uh, startup logo. We'll go over that in a minute, but let's start with uh, activating the shift light. So to activate the shift light, I've got, uh, what I did is I printed off everything on the website. You know, everything you need is going to be on the website, all the shortcuts. Uh, what I've done is printed off, so I have it in front of me. So in order to do the shift light, turn the shift light on, you're gonna to go to preset, and everything's cool, they've made it real nice and easy. Um, everything is basically set by a preset. So we're gonna go preset, and then you're gonna go shift light dash on, and I've already turned it on, so let's see if it works. Okay, cool. So it actually went through the procedure again. So shift light on, you can also go preset shift light, I believe it's off, let me flip a page here and we'll double check that. Leave it shift light off. You can turn it off if you so desire. Yep, shift light off would we'll turn it off. You can also set uh, preset um, DRL dash, what is it? Light off. Uh, turns a little daytime running lamp indicator off in the dash. Never bothered me, but I guess some people didn't like it. Then, let's see, you can do preset DRL full off. This preset disables the cluster DRL indicator and turns the car's DRLs off. So you can do that as well through the cluster. You can preset the mile per hour dim. This preset dims the mile per hour and the KPH light in the cluster to less retina searing levels. Only 2004 cars need to apply this preset. Uh, preset HSV number. So. This preset sets the HSV serial number often used for vehicle year. It's only displayed when the startup logo is set to HSV. So for us, we're going to just activate this. We don't have an HSV number, but we're going to type in preset. And it is, let's see, preset dash, oh, HSV dash number. equals, and we'll just put 2005, writing it to the car, so it's rotated to the cluster, so all is good there. So then, let's see, next example would be preset custom text. So our custom text currently, I guess is right here, LS1. So you wanna put a custom shutdown screen, our text, type preset, dash or space custom dash text equals and uh, let's come up with see ls2 all right so it's wrote the ls2 custom text i'm just going to flip through we'll kind of just touch on these one by one okay so now let's get to the activation of the shift light which we've covered the activation but to the actual uh turning them on. So I've preset these before, you know, 5906, whatever. But um, let's go to preset space RPM set equals. So you're going to, first thing you need to do is your cold shift light. So 
uh, cold shift light, once the engine's under a certain tem temperature, it's uh, gonna kick the shift light on early. So I just want it to kick on all the time, so let's just set the first one, the cold one, to 500. So then you're gonna need to do five gears, because obviously six gears are gonna have a shift light. So the first one, let's say 6,000. I think 6,000 is pretty safe. You do have to play with these a little bit um, because the cluster does lag. And it clearly says that, uh, it says in the, the website notes, it says uh, set your shift light approximately 250 to 300 RPM below your desired shift. I played with mine a little bit. I don't think it was that much. Um, I think I really only had to play with like uh, coming out of first and second gear, the first two shift lights. I think those were set kind of early. Uh, but you're going to have to try a few different things to see where you like it. So let's see, we got third, we'll just set 6,000 here, and then one more here, 6,000. So one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three. Perfect. And we'll commit that to the cluster. So let's put everything to the cluster, 500 RPM cold shift light, and all that's good. So that will activate our shift light. So now the preset for the transmission. So there's a few different presets you can do for the transmission. There is preset zero, which is for a manual, preset one, which is for an automatic, preset two, which I've never used, I've seen it, and I think I've actually set it for some people, manual with gear change indicator, where I think it tells you, or when it goes for the shift light, it tells you to switch gears, and then three, a manual with Prindle 321 indicator. Uh, why, don't ask, but let's set ours to the manual with the gear change. So we're gonna go preset, transmission, Preset, transmission, okay, and what is it here? Equals, and it's gonna, we're gonna set it to number two option. So there's zero, one, two, three. So number two is the manual gear change indicator. So it wrote that to the cluster. And also when you're doing this, the uh, uh, what you see on the screen, he also has it listed on the website that gives the example of what it's gonna show. So let's flip the page. So the next one is going to be preset temp gauge. So you can actually make the temp gauge more accurate. You know, a lot of GM cars, it's kind of a um, kind of a dummy gauge. Um, so you can change that as well. Recalibrate that. Um, you can also set the temp gauge back to stock. Pre or preset over temp. You can change the over temp. Preset preset speedometer. This preset changes the calibration for pulses per kilometer to the cluster. Uh, to correct the 04 speedometer error, set the value to 6226. You should not change this value otherwise unless you cannot change the speedometer settings in the PCM, i.e. with a 4L80 swap. So that's uh, pretty self-explanatory there. Most people won't use that. Okay, so let's get to the preset startup logo. So preset start up dash logo equals, I believe is how it goes. Let me uh, flip the page here. Yep, equals. Okay, so different logos. Zero is gonna be Holden, one is gonna be HSV, two is Chevrolet, three is Omega, which doesn't work, four is Chevrolet Special Vehicles, and five is Pontiac. So, well, ours is already set to one, but we're gonna set to one again. It's gonna write that to the configuration. So when it starts up, we're gonna have the HSV logo, which is my favorite. And that's pretty much the basics of the um, presets. Let me just scan through here and see if there's anything else. Um, we went over list ports, so you can see where your cable's connected to. And there's a whole bunch of stuff listen for the which we went over as well so you can listen to bcm chatter and then there's also the advanced stuff which i've never used but maybe one day i'll explore that or you can explore that then there's the vz cluster mod or vz airbag as well which is basically pretty similar looks like read zero is going to list all your uh, airbag stuff out and tell you if you have a code so read codes it would give you uh reads codes to the module and if you go clear codes it's going to clear all your codes as long as they're not hard codes so uh basically we've gone through set all the basic settings and obviously you can go and you know 
go back and forth or we went over some stuff that we didn't change. But basically, we've added our HSV, uh, HSV serial, which is going to say 2005, which you can set to so just four digit number, you can set to whatever you want. We set the HSV uh, start screen, we set our cold shift light to 500, first gear is six, all the way up to fifth gear is six. The shift light is on, and our custom text says LS2 because it's going in 05. Um, you can put that to whatever you want. You are limited on so many characters, uh, so you have to kind of get creative. I tried a couple other things I was going to do, and it was just too long. Um, so with that, we'll flip back over to the cluster. We'll sh shut down the cluster, start back up, and give you uh, an example of what it looks like once you have the cluster programmed. All right, so we're here at our cluster. I'm going to power cycle it real quick. Here's our HSV startup screen. I'm going to let it go completely through its cycle here. And then we'll shut it off to show that shutdown screen again. It takes a minute. It's going to beep here in a second once it airs out. Airs out. So we'll go ahead and shut it down. So here's our shutdown screen, LS2, and our 2005 number that we put in there. Like I said, you can make that 2005, whatever you want. You might even be able to use it to expand and take a little play in with, but if you run out of digits for your, your shutdown message, you might be able to uh, um, use those digits. So I wonder if I just don't put the, use those digits at all, if you just zero it out, maybe you might be able to get more digits to use for the shutdown message. Never really played with it. Might try that and report back if that works. Uh, but other than that, it's a quick rundown video of how to use VZ Cluster Mod. Big thanks to the people out there that took the time to basically map the cluster and put the software package together for everybody. Uh, so for probably about 20 bucks, you can build your own cable. You can probably buy a cable. Uh, if I get a chance to figure out which cable I bought, I will definitely put the link in the description. Um, a lot easier than building your own cable. But you can also build your own cable. Plenty of information about that out there on uh, many of the forums. Uh, as long as a lot of other good information about the, how the cluster works and some stuff like that. One of the things I am going to try to figure out is I would like to test the shift light on the bench. So I'm going to try to figure out uh, what I've got to do looking at the schematic to actually run the needles up for the, sh or for the RPM gauge. I know somebody posted on one of the forums on how to use the uh, or get the speedometer move. Um, but I'm just hoping if I use the uh, run the RPM gauge up that it would kick the shift light on so you kind of just double check it make sure it's going to kick on at the right RPM at least for maybe cold temperature or what have you uh, so I might be able to do that if I get that figured out I'll definitely post it in the description so you can modify your harness as well so if you need it I'm going to put a link to the software in the description I'll try to find the cable for you uh, if not there's plenty of good information out there on a lot of the forums on how to build your own cable I'm sure one of the forums has a place to buy the cable. I bought mine so many years ago, I couldn't even tell you uh, where I got it. But I'm going to try to find a link to one that would be compatible for you. And, uh, um, you know, have fun with your car. Now this kind of puts it in the, uh, um, I don't know, the hands of being able to do it yourself, not to send your cluster off to somebody else. And it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of people that don't know how to use the software, but it's very basic. But this is just a quick rundown of how to use it kind of played along as you're doing your own cluster um, when you go to program it as well. If you have any questions, post in the comments. I'll try to do my best to answer it. I don't use this software all the time, so I do have to go to my cheat sheet. So I definitely recommend going to the website and printing everything off. The website is very, very informative. Uh, the guy who put this together, our host on the website and all that, he did a really, really good job. So definitely hats off to him. We appreciate that. Like I said, if you have any questions, post in the comments and uh, We'll do our best to answer them for you. Thanks. Have a great day.